The Kepler mission is a mission to search for Earth-like planets around other stars. Uh, it's our first real chance to do this in the history of mankind. We don't know which stars have planets. We don't know st which stars are likely to have planets. And so to get around this problem, uh, Kep the Kepler project is making up for this ignorance by volume. They're looking at 170,000 stars continuously for at least three and a half years. Of those 170,000 stars, they expect that maybe 100, maybe 100 out of 170,000 will show this signal that they're, they're hoping to find from Earth-like planets by what's called this occultation technique or the transit technique. The very, very tiny dip in the light coming from the star as an Earth-like planet passes between us and the star. They have to keep track of, track of all of them because the signal, this little drop in light, takes about 13 hours for an Earth-like planet in an orbit like the Earth, uh, and happens once every year. Okay, so they're looking not only for the needle in the haystack, but for the needle in the haystack for a little tiny bit of time uh, over a very long period of time. We've been doing it the dumb way, uh, which is trying to do it from the Earth, uh, which is a rotating platform. And so we've been trying from the Earth to get around that problem through the whole Earth Telescope Project and others like it where we set up a string of telescopes around the globe and as the Earth turns and the star that we're looking at sets, we pass the star on to the next uh, telescope down to the west. But we're subject to weather uh, from the Earth. We're subject to the problems that no two telescopes are alike. And furthermore, we can't afford to do ground-based observations of a single star continuously for more than a couple of weeks before we all drop in exhaustion. Uh, Kepler will be looking at stars the right way, which is all the time, from a platform that's not rotating, uh, that's very, very stable and can point in one direction continuously for, for quite a long time. The thing that makes Kepler interesting is that it's not going to be in orbit around the Earth. It's in an Earth-trailing, sun-centered orbit. The advantage of that, again, is no Earth. You can point at one part of the sky forever without worrying about the sun getting in the way, the Earth getting in the way the moon getting in the way. Iowa State's been instrumental in maintaining the whole Earth telescope and keeping that ball running for many, many years. My role here is, as part of the whole Earth telescope project, I have a lot of experience dealing with uh, the same kind of data that's going to be coming from Kepler. People know that Iowa State is a place where this kind of work has been done in the past. Iowa State's role is, is still an important one, uh, moving out beyond the whole Earth telescope to a space-based telescope. We haven't looked at stars. Uh, at a brightness precision of one part per million before. At its best, the Kepler mission will do a, a factor of 100 better than we've been able to do from the ground. In science, you go a factor of 10 better in measuring something. You learn not only new things, but things that you never even imagined you would learn. And with Kepler, we're going to be going two orders of magnitude more sensitive than we're accustomed to on the ground. And so we will be confounded <laughs> with things we have never expected to see. Kepler will find them if they're there.